Hey everybody, we are back with HDR Economics and Factum Financial. We got talking today about you know why you should buy policies on your kids, and Kyle has actually some illustrations up that show exactly the power of doing so. Awesome, and we have some special guests with us today. We have say your name, Rhett, Rhett and Riker here. Now, every one of our kids, I've only got one. Harrison has a lot. A lot. I think five. I think I think we're at five. Five kids, and they're all maxed out. So what we're showing you is a maxed out contract for kids. Now, why would we buy life insurance on our children? There's a few different reasons. One, these policies are designed to fit a lot of cash in there, so they behave just like a liquid, safe, guaranteed savings account. That's all they really are, but they do come with a death benefit. Now, if you want to max out your kids, so both of these guys are insured for about... $750,000 and the only reason we could get that much insurance on them is that the parents, Diane and I, McKenna and you, have twice the coverage that the kids have. Now the insurance companies will let you have a million dollars of coverage on a minor. So the only way to do that is if mom and dad are pretty heavily insured too. So one of the big reasons we, we try to get insurance as early as possible is there's very little underwriting. We have a lot of people that come through and say, I love this concept, I want one of these banking policies, but they're uninsurable because they might have a medical history or uh, health concerns. And so if you can get them insured at this age, there's really no underwriting. The second one is that's the most possible time to let the money compound in that policy. And compounding interest is very powerful. Next is there's a low cost of insurance. These policies that we have on our kids are anywhere from 5,000 to 7,500 a year, and that buys them almost a million dollars of tax-free death benefit. The cost of insurance is so low. So what we've got pulled up right here is, this is actually Rhett's policy. Nice. Look at all these numbers. And what we're gonna do with this policy is, as it starts to accumulate cash inside the policy, we're going to use it to buy a couple rental properties, which is the plan we have set up for Riker and Rhett. So what I'm going to do is pull up two rental properties. So in the 11th year of this policy, we're going to go out and buy a rental property. I'm going to put a down payment, and in this case, it's $50,000, and that's going to produce about $250 a month of cash flow. And then when Rhett is 16 years old, you can see here we're going to do the second rental. So now that there's two rentals on there, the cash flow from that will be about $6,000, which would pay for the premium for this policy. And that means we've essentially built a perpetual wealth strategy for our kids. So now imagine them, Harrison, graduating high school at 18, if they want to go to college, if they want to start a business, if they want to you know, do some service, if they want to go travel the world, they've got this account that we can gift to them and transfer ownership after age 18, I know you and I both wish we would have had something like this set up for us. Absolutely. Now think about that. They don't even have to put in any more money because the real estate will pay the premiums on the policy and inside there it'll build more cash every single year. But obviously we're gonna encourage them to work and put even more money into the policy than just that minimum. Now that is a phenomenal wealth building system. So our, our goal here really with infinite banking is just to, it's not about investing, it's about keeping more money for us personally, but also in the family. So the average person is gonna drive around 13 vehicles in their life, spend about $400,000 on those purchases. They're gonna drive, they're gonna own homes, they're gonna go to college, they're gonna take vacations. Now, every time a dollar is spent, where is that money being transferred? somewhere else outside of the family it ends up inevitably with the big banks so what we're trying to solve here is when Rhett needs his first car at 16 he's gonna come inside the family for financing he's gonna pay it the money to dad and inside your policy as that accumulates and same for Riker when we pass they're going to inherit that enormous windfall so they're they're paying into a system that increases our lifestyle right now and they're gonna get it all back times really a hundred probably more is what they're creating their own legacy that'll be built through us. Now that goes for vehicles, mortgages, college education, it, really anything you wanna use this for. Now let's go even deeper. Imagine Rhett being 11 years old when you take him to go look at a real estate property and teach him this is what we do. 11 years old. 
So think about the stewardship we get to teach our kids at 11 years old, 16. They're gonna come with us to actually look at some of these properties. We're gonna show them this is how our family behaves. These are the new patterns we've built for each other. And talk a little bit about the kicking the can mentality that we were talking about the other day. Yeah, it, well, and first, just to finish what you were saying, it doesn't have to be real estate. I can't wait to be able to show Rhett at 11 years old what if his ambition is something totally different, that he wants to start a business or whatever. Now he'll be able to, uh, I mean, at, at 11 years old, I wasn't learning this stuff until I was much older, dude, so you're, you're set. And, and like Kyle, like you were saying, we have become generation after generation of just kicking the can down the road of you know debt whether it's national or state debts that we just say you know what it's it's going to be a problem for our future generations we're not going to worry about it right now same thing with our family financials it's like you know we, we care about ourselves right now let's let's get through retirement and then our kids will will take care of them so that's not what the big successful families do you know they're always turning their their lifestyle and their financial health better than when they received it. That's exactly what we're going to do. And, and no more can kicking in our, in our future. Nope. So as you can see, this is incredibly powerful. And the power comes from them starting so young. Like we say before, you know, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. And so doing these things with our children at such an early age just magnifies that power. So make sure that you are engaging with us and collaborating in our private Facebook groups or on our uh, pages and uh, we'll see you there. But guys, can you say goodbye? Say, bye. say goodbye bye. to our amazing say audience. Bye. bye.